This is Hank Kuhneman, and he absolutely hates Democrats with the burning, fiery passion of a thousand hot suns. Let me just introduce you to the guy if you're unfamiliar. This is from late October 2022. He loves comparing Democrats to Nazis. So you know what? Let's do that. Let's see how the two parties stand up against the comparison. I think that's a fine idea. Check out what he had to say here. The very things that they did in Nazi Germany, wake up church, under Hitler, they're trying with us, this administration, this fake one. Interesting claim. He claims that Democrats are basically Nazis, right? Let's examine it. Let's find out. Let's see which political party is the most like the Nazi party. Late October 2022, he comes out there and he says this about Democrats. Too many people are eating the donkey party's agenda. Okay, I don't know why he keeps calling them the donkey party, but donkey is the symbol that the Democrats use generally, so. They're eating liberalism. They're eating woke. They're eating BLM. I don't know what all that means. It sounds disgusting. They're eating absolute that there's many genders. They're eating that traditional marriage is not the way of true marriage. Come on. And it's been the liberal donkey party that has been absolutely propagating these stupid lies that people are eating. A little bit of a lackluster clap there, but okay. And it's why people believe that there's no hope. Because the donkey party and a few rhinos have been behind the mess that we are in today. And I make no apologies for it. What mess exactly is he talking about? Like, I think America is in quite a mess. But the reason I think it, it's in a mess is almost certainly very different than the reason that he thinks it's in a mess. I think it's in a mess because we've got QAnoners running all over the place, talking about JFK Jr. coming back and voting and being the vice president with Donald Trump and all kinds of other crazy stuff. What mess does he think that we are in? Yeah, the donkey party of the non-religious affiliation, the anti-Christian movement, the anti-true God movement. Okay, Democrats are not opposed to religion at all. I'd love that if that were the case. It's not. That's just not it. Democrats are majority religious, as a matter of fact. But this guy is absolutely obsessed with convincing you that the Democrats are the party of the non-religious. The Democrats hate Christians. It's a complete fabrication. Yeah, that's what they want you to eat. There has been a siege from the donkey party, primarily who's guilty of it, that not only attacked our churches and made it dove's dung, but now they've gone after the children. See, this is their method of attack right now. When I say they, I'm talking about Republican leadership and evangelical leadership like Hank Kuhneman. That is the mode of attack that they've been using lately because everybody can get on board with saving children. So if you can convince them that children are really in danger, then it could move people over. Then it could convince them to vote for this person or that person. So what do they do? They go out there and scream nonstop about Democrats trying to take our children away from us or whatever other nonsense. You can have some dude dressed up in a wig and call themselves a woman and read to your children. Hell no, not in my school and not to my kid. They're not doing that in schools. Drag, drag queen story hour, I think is what he's referring to. Yeah, that's not happening in schools. If you don't want your kid to go to some event like that, don't bring him to some event like that. But this is like the most anti-freedom argument I could possibly imagine. People like this are always talking about how important freedom is. Freedom to do anything you want. I love my freedom, right? What happened to freedom? What happened to it? This guy is actively taking steps to try to prevent people from exercising their freedoms. He's taking steps to prevent them from living their lives and doing what they want to do practicing the way they practice or, or whatever. What happened to giving a sh about the Constitution? What happened? It went right out the window when it wasn't convenient for him anymore. 
Oh, yeah, and screaming about trans people is pretty popular right now, too. It is the one thing that consistently gets applause lines in Republican conventions and Trump rallies and stuff, so that's what they've been doing. I don't want no pervert, and I don't want no in my school read it to my kids, and I don't want their curriculum. Yeah, so it's just pure, unadulterated hate. It is an attempt to separate people into groups and categories and break them down, hate them for who they are. That's what it is, plain and simple. So let's see. Let's compare, shall we? Who is the Nazi here? Which one is the Nazi? Are we talking Hank Kuhneman or Democrats? Which strategy or thing is more like the Nazi movement? This is a movie from, I think it's 1942 to 1947. I'm not sure which year it was released exactly, but it's from a series of movies. This one is called Don't Be a Sucker, and it's just a small excerpt. This guy is standing up here on a podium, screaming at a crowd. Listen to what he says. And some of the things I see in this country of ours make my blood boil. I see people with foreign accents making all the money. I see Negroes holding jobs that belong to me and you. Now I ask you, if we allow this thing to go on, what's going to become of us real Americans? Does any of this sound familiar? I mean, we have heard these exact things from the mouths of Hank Kuhneman, Donald Trump, Lance Walna, Kenneth Copeland, all of them. Word for word, we've heard some of this stuff. Americans. I've heard this kind of talk before, but I never expected to hear it in America. This fellow seems to know what he's talking about. Yes, he knows all right. What's the answer? What are we real Americans going to do about it? You'll find it right here in this little pamphlet. The truth about Negroes and foreigners. The truth about the Catholic Church. We'll never be able to call this country our own until it's a country without. Without what? Yeah, without what? Without Negroes. Without alien foreigners. Without Catholics. Without Freemasons. You know these What's wrong with the Masons? I'm a Mason. Hey, that fellow's talking about me. And that makes a difference, doesn't it? Before he said Masons, you were ready to agree with him. Well, yes, but he was talking about... What about those other people? In this country, we have no other people. This film was produced to prevent Americans from going down the same path that the Nazis went down in Germany in the 1930s and 40s. That's what this film was produced for, to wake people up to the fact that this is an easy road to go down. This is exactly what the Nazis did in the 30s. This is how it started. Demonize the people you don't like, divide them into groups, make them distrust each other, and then take them down one by one. Simple as that. That is what that is the strategy that Nazis used. And we can see the exact same thing playing out today, now, in society. We have heard those exact words from Donald Trump and from his evangelical pastors. Exact words. Keep listening to what they have to say here. We have no other people. We are American people, all of us. What about you? You aren't American, are you? I was born in Hungary, but now I am an American citizen. And I have seen what this kind of talk can do. I saw it in Berlin. What were you doing there? I was a professor at the university. I heard the same words we have heard today. But I was a fool then. I thought Nazis were crazy people, stupid fanatics. But unfortunately, it was not so. It was so. They just managed to get a grip on society in a way that made it nearly impossible to escape. It was nearly impossible to break them out of it once they started getting suspicious 
and prejudiced against their fellow Germans, against their their fellow citizens. That's the, that's the problem. That's what the the far right is all about. It's about dividing and hating and wanting things to go back to the way it was when you were a child. And that means no immigrants, no it has to be a perfectly homogenous society including religiously. It's absolutely disgusting, honestly. You see they knew that they were not strong enough to conquer a unified country. So they split Germany into small groups. They used prejudice as a practical weapon to cripple the nation. You know, this is the important part of the film. Listen to this one key sentence. Of course, that was not easy to do. They had to work hard to do it. You see, we human beings are not born with prejudices. Always they are made for us. Made by someone who wants something. Remember that when you hear this kind of talk. Some that is the key. Human beings are not born with prejudices or hate. We, we just aren't. We are not born with that stuff. Now, we may favor one group over another if we find ourselves in that group. Like, you know, we find ourselves liking the Yankees, but we're talking to a Red Sox fan. We may find ourselves favoring the other Yankees fans in the area rather than the Red Sox fan. To some degree, we are a little bit of a tribal society. Prejudices and hatred are all fabricated. You ever wonder why we're separated on skin color rather than eye color? Why don't blue-eyed people hate green-eyed people? It's because it's all fabricated. It is all made up to benefit somebody, and that somebody isn't you. Race isn't real. We are all human beings. It's just some of us have more melanin in our skin than others. That's it. That's the only difference. But he's going to get something out of it. And it isn't going to be you. When you hear him say somebody's going to get something out of it and it isn't going to be you, listen to what Hank Kuhneman said again at the end there. Primarily who's guilty of it that not only attacked our churches and made it dove's dung, but now they've gone after the children. Who's they? Hank Kuhneman's enemies, the people he doesn't like, that too. You can have some dude dressed up in a wig and call themselves a woman and read to your children. Hell no, not in my school and not to my kid. It is all about drawing boundary lines to hate people more efficiently, to break down society so that they distrust each other, so that they hate and distrust each other, and that makes you more powerful. That's what it's all about. Prejudice is a tool used to make somebody more powerful, and that somebody is not you. Before we continue, I just wanted to mention something. If you like what I do and you want to see me continue to do it, you can support me in a few ways. First, there's Patreon. That's probably the best way. But if you want to get something back for your support, you can check out my Teespring. Or you can check out my Telltale Unfiltered channel. I go through long-form, unhinged sermons from all kinds of people, from Hank Kuhneman to Greg Locke to Jehovah's Witnesses. So give it a look. Links are in the description. Okay, now back to the video. Check out this next clip from Hank. Listen to this one. This one was from uh, late October 2022. I played a clip of it at the very beginning. The very things that they did in Nazi Germany, wake up church, under Hitler, they're trying with us, this administration, this fake one. Okay, so he says that the left is basically like Hitler, or basically like the Nazi party, right? The left is the Nazi party when we're doing the exact same things. I feel confident in saying I've already disproven that, but let's take it a step further. Why not, right? Let's do it. History always repeats itself. I pray it doesn't with America, but that's- No, it most definitely is repeating itself with America right now. That's where we've been heading. Amen. Defund the police? Oh, that's what they did and put in uh, the Nazis. No, 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 it isn't. That is not what they did. They didn't defund the police and put Nazis in. I read a book called Ordinary Men by Christopher R. Browning, and it talks about the police battalions and the military in Nazi Germany and how they came to the point where they were so radicalized that they would be willing to do the horrific stuff that they did. It is absolutely worth the read if you have the time. But anyway, they didn't defund the police in Germany in during World War II. 
they just convinced the police that their way was the best way or they would fire a cop and replace him with a Nazi one. But again, you see what he's doing here. He's trying to draw a line between us and them. He's trying to make you hate and distrust the people on this side of the line, even the people on the left. You don't agree with the slogan, defund the police? Fine, you don't have to agree with that slogan, but you must at least see what he's doing, right? You must see that he's trying to make people distrust each other. If he can make moderates, you know, independents, or even people that are slightly less to the left than others distrust everybody else on the left, he's succeeded. That's what it's all about, dividing and conquering. Start rewriting the curriculums. That's what they did under uh, Hitler. That's true enough. I can accept that. Does he think the left is rewriting curriculums? He is sorely mistaken. The right has been doing everything that they could to rework curriculums this entire time, up to and including burning books, getting them out of libraries, banning them from school libraries and everything, doing everything they can to take over school board seats, the whole nine yards. The right has most definitely been rewriting curriculums, banning books, and taking over school boards. Tell you to trust the science. Your trust is in government help, like pay your college bills. Increase inflation. Okay, now hang on a second. So let's just make note of what he just said. The fact that the left is saying people should trust the science, that's a quality that the Nazis shared? Just make note of that for a second. Keep listening because we're going to come back to that. Increase inflation so that you get more and more dependent. Censor you through the media. Alter elections. All of the things that we have faced in America, they've tried to do this. Okay, literally none of that is true. The whole censorship thing, the right is far more guilty of censoring people than the left is. Seriously, you think the left is more guilty of this because you hear the right screaming about it constantly, like banshees. The right censors people significantly more often than the left. They cancel people significantly more often than the left. That's why they're constantly talking about how evil Disney is. What do you think would happen to Donald Trump if he came out as gay tomorrow? Do you think he would still get as many votes as he did in 2020 or 2016? They have no problem with canceling or censoring. They love it, as a matter of fact. They just don't want you to love it. They want you to think the left is doing it. They want you to to be angry with others for doing it and don't want you to pay attention to what they're doing over here. And they're doing it. Okay, so let's go back to that thing he said about science, right? The Nazi party wanted you to trust the science. No, literally no to all of that. This guy, obviously, like, does he not know? Is he lying? Is he just uninformed i don't know i'm not sure like where the guy's head is at but he's completely and totally wrong let's go back to don't be a sucker 1942 listen to this section of it here there were others who spoke for truth and i am proud to say that educators were among them and what may i ask is an Aryan? i don't know myself there's no such thing as race There's no such thing. But let us see what our present so-called authorities have to say about him. They say he is tall. Is Joseph Goebbels, uh, the propaganda minister for the Nazi party, I believe. Slender. Not sure who that guy is, but my God, I love this dude's accent. It's fantastic, right? This dude's a god hard ass. The professor here that's pointing out all the inconsistencies. Blue eyed and blonde. There is no Aryan race. And more important, there is no master race. There are people who may find these ideas convenient. But science cannot support them. 
There is no scientific proof that there is any correlation between a man's racial characteristics and his native ability or character. In all racial groups, we find the same range of potentialities. We find idiots and geniuses. We find criminals and philanthropists. We must judge each man as an individual and not by the color of his skin or his eyes or by the length of his nose. The reason he said the length of his nose is because Hitler kept putting unusual characteristics onto the people that he hated. He kept putting like propaganda magazines and posters and stuff, kept putting like dehumanizing features on Jews and, and others that he didn't like. That's why he mentioned that. Or by the length of his nose. Come in, gentlemen. Make yourselves comfortable. He knew he was taking a great risk by talking about this in the first place. I mean, this type of thing played out a lot in Nazi Germany, like all the time. This is one of the first group of people that the Nazis went after, was educators, was scientific minds, because they were the ones that could debunk the bullshit that Hitler was laying down on people about an Aryan race, a master race. They're superior to these people or those people or whatever else. That's why he went after them the way that he did. So if this guy knew he was taking a huge risk by talking about this at all in the classroom. And the police bust in the door. Make yourselves comfortable. There are many differences between individuals. We each have different capabilities, different backgrounds, different views about what's right and what's wrong. Like the difference between me and these gentlemen who have just arrived. But that is not the difference in race. It is a difference in the way we think. Remember that. And remember that there is no master race. That is a scientific truth. Anyone who tells you otherwise is lying. It was all about controlling people. It was all about dividing, lying to them, making them think that they were superior to everybody else, to build them up into a, a, a superhero type of figure, to make them feel special, to make them feel superior to this group over here that they didn't like. That's what it was all about. And we can see the exact same thing playing out today, right now, from the evangelical leaders. You know another propaganda method they like to use? It's something I like to call the know you propaganda method. Logical fallacies and propaganda methods are commonly linked to each other, but not always and not necessarily. So you have different propaganda techniques that are typically based on certain logical fallacies. Like I said, not always, but they are linked to each other. There's the no you logical fallacy called tu quoque, and then there's the no you propaganda method. That They're not technically linked to each other, but I'm inventing the new propaganda method. It's called no you. The no you propaganda method. I've come up with it. You heard it here first. It is the idea that these people try to accuse their enemies of what they are doing before their enemies have an opportunity to call them out for it. I've just, in my opinion, unequivocally proven to you that Hank Kuhneman is objectively acting more like a Nazi than most people on the left, than the Democratic Party is. So why is he accusing the Democratic Party? of being Nazis when he very well knows what he's doing, right? He must. I can't imagine he doesn't know exactly what he's doing. He's using propaganda to point the finger in the other direction before it's pointed at him. That's what it's all about with these people. Let me know what you think about this in the comments or on Twitter at Telltale Atheist.